everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Let's Play series. Thank you as always for all of your lovely support throughout this series, my friends. I very much do appreciate it. Now, of course, if you want to continue supporting the series, by far the easiest way to do so is simply to drop a like. But of course, if you want to go on further, use code Python and ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. So today, my friends, we are going to begin with the comment of the day. EJ underscore plays says, since you're playing mage at the moment, you should grab the Meteor Staff and Sky Fracture. They should be pretty good for the mech bosses. Keep up the good work. Hey, thank you so much for that, EJ. Yeah, the Sky Fracture and Meteor Staff. I think that'll be a lovely little double goal to go for here, my friendos. I really do. So yeah, we're going to spend the episode going ahead and trying to get those bad boys in amongst other stuff. But before we do any of that, I decided to go ahead and do more lava fishing since the last episode. As a result, I have 20 Hellstone Crates. We need only nine titanium bars in order for us to be able to make ourselves the full set of titanium armor. So here we go, 20 crates. We need nine of the freaking thingies and we've got none. Uh, amazing. We've got absolutely no titanium bars out of that. Oh my word, man. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe it, dude. What is up with that kind of look, dude? So, uh, yeah, that's 20 minutes worth of crate fishing that just sort of went down the drain there. Good job, RNG. Really appreciate that one, buddy. But on the bright side, ladies and gentlemen, we did get ourselves a new pet here, the Slice of Hell Cake, which summons a baby imp. Oh, look at him. He's actually kind of adorable right there. But yet again, I kind of like having the little chest dude following me around because, you know, he's like functionally useful, I guess. So, uh, yeah, we'll stick with this guy. In other good news, ladies and gentlemen, one of the other things I managed to get from the lava fishing session is, in fact, this. The bottomless lava bucket, my friends. Now, of course, what we need to do is try and get the water counterparts. So I think it might just about be time to start picking up the fishing quests again, my friends. We need need the absorbent sponge and we need the bottomless water bucket okay and then we're pretty much good in terms of bottomless buckets and sponges and stuff are we gonna do more fishing in today's episode uh no the only thing we'll do is maybe a fishing quest here and there when they roll around okay i mean if you guys are anything like me right now i'm starting to get a little bit bored of fishing but uh yeah we'll still do the quest just so we can see what we get so underground and caverns let's get it done come on we're looking for fishotron well they're saying that armored cavefish are actually pretty appreciated. Yeah, endurance potions. Always a good thing to be able to make. Really? I'm trying to get Fishotron, and I was just trying to sort of widen this lake here. Uh, is it going to be one of those frustrating episodes where I'm trying to get a bunch of goals done, but Terraria has other ideas? Hmm, I've got less than two minutes to try and get this darn fish. It really isn't going to happen, huh? We're really not going to get the Fishotron fish. Ah, <sighs> all right, well, let's go ahead and get whatever the next quest fish is going to be. Jungle surface. Okay, that should be way the heck easier. We simply pop on over here and we get the derpy fish. Uh, nope, that's a crate. We're going to get the derpy fish next. Nope, okay, maybe third time lucky, yeah? Ah, there it is! Derpy fish obtained, and now we are going to get ourselves one of the hard mode things we were looking for. Uh, no, the tackle box. Uh, decreases chance of bait consumption. I wonder if this would stack with my supreme lava tackle bag box thingy. Only if that does work, then we could really try to push the boat out in terms of trying to see just how high an amount of fishing power we could truly have. So maybe I actually start saving these accessories again. Alright, on to the sky fracture and meteor staff. The question is this, can we go ahead and make any of those a right now. I'm pretty sure that they require souls of light, so let's have a little bit of a look here. The Sky Fracture requires two light shards, okay, and the magic missile as well. Huh, that's kind of cool. We've got the cool whip here as well. Nice, nice. And there's the meteor staff, 20 meteorite bar. Oh, wow, this is easy to make. I can make this right now. And then, yeah, pretty much all we need is light shards, and we can make the Sky Fracture as well. What about the cool whip? Frost core is needed, as are souls of night. There we are. There's the magic missile for the eventual sky fracture. So all we got to do now is push ourselves down here. And ladies and gentlemen, the meteor staff. There it is, coming in at 78 
magic damage. I imagine once we put mythical on it, if we can get mythical on it, this is going to be what? Maybe 90 plus damage? Unfortunately for us, my friends, we cannot get light shards. Uh, not unless we can get some light mummies to potentially spawn underground. I don't know. Maybe there's another way of getting light shards that I can't remember. According to the wiki, they can also drop from the dreamer ghouls, which are in underground hallow desert. And we've also got the crystal thresher, which I'm pretty sure spawns in the hallow desert when there's a sandstorm going on. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, now, this may be easier said than done then, my friends. Alrighty, my friends, I've got an idea, okay? We've got battle potions here. We are going to grab ourselves out a water candle as well. A bunch of sand. There we have it. And we're also going to try and get ourselves some hallowed powder or whatever it is you can use to spread the hallow quickly to many, many blocks here. So, yeah, that should do the job, right? Ah, here we are. Holy water. We don't even require a crafting station, interestingly. We just need ourselves some hallowed seeds. The question, I guess, is this. Can we go ahead and get some hallowed seeds from the Dryad of her Sky Island? All right, how about some hallowed seeds there, Budski? Yep, there we have it. Beautiful. <laughs> let's go get ourselves some holy water and let's get this show on the road, shall we? We're going to make ourselves a rudimentary underground hallowed desert. Oh, yeah, I forgot to address this entirely. I'm going ahead and trying to smooth out my world a whole bunch. You can see I've sort of started to begin doing so. Where these torches are represents where we will eventually have trees, right? And then we'll sort of restore the natural beauty of the Terraria world here. But we do need to go ahead and get rid of this very, 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 very large area up here and get rid of the background walls as well. And then, yeah, we'll have ourselves another nice area in which we can build if we really wanted. Hey, there we are. Holy water. Nice. Spreads the hallow to some blocks. I mean, we probably didn't need that many, but uh, there we have it. <laughs> Since we already have the hallow pretty much all over our base, I kind of figured that maybe the easiest idea would be to simply, I don't know, adapt the terrain down here and make a little bit of a rudimentary underground hallowed desert, right? So yeah, let's flatten the land here. We'll get ourselves a few layers of sand placed down and we'll hallowify them. Alrighty, a nice long flat area. Let's go ahead and add in a bunch of sand. So as you can see, my friends, slowly but surely we are placing in all of the sand. And well, as you can see, some of it is already starting to get overcome with the hallowed here, which is great. Obviously, we'll speed it along with the holy water in just a bit here. But first, I just want to get all 300 blocks of sand down because then I'm pretty sure this will officially be big enough to be a homemade underground desert biome. I certainly hope so anyway. There we are, 300... Oh, a death. Okay, I was just going to say, there we are, 300 blocks of sand placed down. But no, my task completion was cut short by a good old-fashioned death. Ah, you love to see it, don't you? Yeah! All right, let's help this along a little bit. Oh, that's a regular mummy. Well, at least we know that mummies spawn down here now. That's cool. All we've got to do is hallowify this entire place, and all of those mummies that spawn here now will hopefully wind up being light mummies, which is what we're needing. Hey, look at that, my friends. Light mummies. Nice. I like a trifle map. Very cool. There we are, my friends. Our light mummy rudimentary farm is operational. It works a treat, doesn't it? Ah, there you are, little mimic. I've been searching for this guy for like a good two minutes, but uh, there he is. And what did he give me? A magic dagger and a whole bunch of gold coins. <laughs> hey, there we are. One out of two light shards, my friendos. It should only be a matter of time. Oh, hello there. We get unicorns spawned down here as well, apparently. Huh. All right, I think we've inadvertently made a unicorn horn farm as well. <laughs> That's great. I actually very much do need those bad boys because, yeah, making holy arrows is going to be something that we might want to do if we want to try and defeat the destroyer later on with a Daedalus Storm Bay because, believe me, it's still a deadly, deadly combination that still works even today. They apparently nerfed that combination, the Daedalus Storm Bay and holy arrows, in one of the 1.4 updates, but, um... Not really. Not really. It's still powerful as heck. <laughs> Whoa! Uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a hallowed mimic. And those bad boys have got rather... Ah! And those bad boys have rather a lot of health. And they have a little bit of a rebound attack if you're not careful. 
Which, clearly, I wasn't. So, yeah, I, I rather deserved that death, didn't I? <laughs> you know what? I'm kind of regretting one thing. I really kind of wish that I made this down at the sort of cavern layer. Because then we could use this as like an inadvertent soul farm as well. Huh. Maybe I should have made it down here instead. I mean, who says we can't have two hallowed farms, huh? Maybe this one can specifically be for mummies, and the one down here can be for soul farming, right? At the end of the day, nothing is off limits in this series, so we're just gonna keep on. Oh my gosh, things might be starting to get a little bit out of hand now. There's rather a lot of guys here, but hey-ho, we can get ourselves a bunch of resources. <laughs> Go on, give me a blessed apple. I want a freaking new mount, my dudes. It has been a while since I've had a new mount. I mean, like, check this out. I still have the freaking slimy crown. That's crazy, isn't it? Hey! Unicorn on a stick and the blessed apple as well. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think that was a pretty blessed drop right there. I mean, to get both of those at the same time from the same unicorn, that has got to be a rare event indeed. The blessed apple and the unicorn on the stick. Come on, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Cheers, Budski. I have been really unlucky in terms of not getting light shards. I'm pretty sure it's a 1 in 10 drop from light mummies, but uh, yeah, I've been getting the raw end of the deal, unfortunately. But you know what? Perseverance is key. Let's grab ourselves another battle potion. Let's get ourselves back down there. I ain't giving up. I ain't no giver upper. No. Hey, there we have it, my friends. We have ourselves the second light shard finally. Fantastic. All right, we're just about done here. Right, can we make this thing off the rip? Yes, we can. 58 magic damage, a whopping 38% crit chance. Oh my gosh. That is a lot of crit chance. That is absolutely crazy. So potentially, this could have a higher damage output than the Meteor Staff because of the crit chance alone. I don't know, man. I mean, there is a fairly significant amount of damage difference. But again, the crit chance could mean that we could have either around the same or more damage output than the Meteor Staff. All we could do is reforge them and maybe give them a go. Maybe we finally make ourselves some target dummies, eh? I mean, that's not something I've done in a very, very long time. Maybe we could test our damage outputs, eh? I mean, at the end of the day, my friends, we have our sickle. We can go ahead and grab ourselves some little hay bales here. And then we use the hay bales here. I'm pretty sure in a sawmill, and that should allow us to make ourselves some target dummies. There it is. The target dummy requires 50 hay per time. So that means we can make, what, three of these? Yeah, I think that'll be enough for us to go ahead and test our weapons pretty effectively here. Temporarily, we'll go ahead and place down the target dummies right on in here. And then, yeah, maybe eventually we can make ourselves a proper weapons testing room in our base around here somewhere. I mean, we've got this large square of land here. We could probably make use of it. And another large square down here. We've got ourselves a big old area here that we could do something with eventually. I mean, this really is becoming one of those bases which is like ever evolving, isn't it? I mean, just look at the amount of banners we have down now. Hey, eh? I mean, this place looks like a properly lived in place and I love it. So check it out, my friends. In addition to the meteor stuff and the sky fracture, we did, of course, also get the magic dagger. We have a trio of brand new magic weapons to give a go. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reforge them all and we are going to see just what kind of stuff we can get on them. We are looking ideally for stuff that has plus damage and minus mana cost. So masterful, celestial, mystic, mythical, all of those things would work in our favor very, very nicely. All right, let's start off here with the meteor stuff. Only two gold to reforge. Let's see what we get. Masterful off the rip. Hell yeah, dude. The Sky Fracture. Oh, that's a bit more expensive, isn't it? All right, if we can get ourselves mystic or mythical... Ooh, Godly's nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is nice, but it's not really what we're looking for. Ooh, 68 damage, man. Ooh, keen, nasty, intense, inept, damaged, manic, no... Uh, yeah, okay, I'll take this. That's actually kind of decent. Oh, damn it! That was unintentional. Uh, yeah, my goblin tinkerer is now dead because I unintentionally sort of knocked that wraith back into him. Um, yeah, not really the wisest idea I've ever had, is it? <laughs> oh, no! Poor Statson is finally out of the game! Oh, I'm so sad. 
All right, well, we're going to have to wait now, my friends. Oh, for goodness sake, how stupid am I? Seriously. Right, you know what, ladies and gentlemen? You know what? I noticed something in my tools chest, which I think we can go ahead and do for the rest of the episode, okay? We have vicious powder, all right? This stuff spreads the crimson. So what about if we were to make this very large area down here into a homemade crimson biome instead? I mean, unfortunately, the crimson island, it just doesn't seem to cut the mustard. I've not had a single enemy spawn up there, aside from the typical sky dudes, you know, wyverns and harpies. Whereas, if we start putting stuff down here in a nice controlled environment, we could probably get ourselves a bunch of souls of night, ichor, and various materials needed to eventually defeat the brain of Cthulhu finally, eh? Yeah, okay, I think that's the way to go. I think that is the way to go. So let's grab ourselves some stone and some materials, and we're going to get this thing done. All right, you know what? I've got a question. Can you go ahead and override an ebon stone block with crimson? You can! Oh! Well, that's a game changer. Okay, well, I could go ahead and take down some ebon stone, and we can go at it that way instead, because sadly, my stone supply is very, very thin. <laughs> you learn new things every day, eh, guys? I genuinely didn't know you could overcome ebon stone with uh, crimson, but there we have it. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, and uh, yeah, gold bunnies. They're also kind of cool. Don't mind if I do. So the first thing we're going to do is add in a bit of a border to this place so that the crimstone blocks cannot go ahead and start spreading all over the place like wildfire, okay? Because that is something we don't want to have happen. We've got Moba the Goblin Tinkerer now, my friendos. All right, we'll go ahead and reforge our magic dagger to finish off the episode in just a bit, okay? So yeah, today's episode is very much been a sort of farm creating weapon upgrades kind of episode. Something which I hope you guys have enjoyed today. Oh! And also deaths. That's that's something else that's kind of been the theme of today's episode. <laughs> oh, come on, man! Gee whiz! Literally 30 seconds after the last death. Oh, I can tell this is just going to be an absolute ball lake, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I know, I know. I have to keep telling myself this is going to be worth it. This is going to be worth it. Just persevere, Python. Come on, you can get this thing done and then you won't have to do it again, all right? Ah, there's one thing I'm slightly worried about now, ladies and gentlemen, and that is whether or not the spread radius of the powder means that the crimson will spread beyond the red shingle blocks. I certainly hope not, because that was put a bit of a spanner in the works, wouldn't it? Because we are trying our best to have a controlled area here. So, I mean, I guess there's only one way to find out, my friends. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's do a little bit of that. And, okay, it doesn't go beyond. Yeah. All right. Once again, though, keeping it nice and controlled. Making sure it doesn't go beyond the shingles, because we do not want that. Not at all. There we have it. We now have a crimson area. Beautiful. Right. And now, to exacerbate the situation, we can put down these here candles. And, uh, yeah, we will now get absolutely bombarded by every creature living. Do you know what? I don't think I've put enough down. I don't think I've put enough crimson blocks down. Uh-huh. Well, that could also put a spanner in the works. Oh! Okay, I just got destroyed by golden shower. Ew, someone peed on me and that killed me. That's disgusting. Ugh. <laughs> We're so nearly done. So nearly done. Come on, Python, just stick through it. Hey, finally, vertebrae. Stuff we need to summon in the brain of Cthulhu manually. That bleeding time. Also, look at that. We've got our first ever eye core as well. Beautiful. Oh! Flaming arrows! <laughs> oh, goodness me. I, I, I don't even know what to say anymore. I think what's happened here is we've got way too much hallow here. If this was sort of all pure biome, we could have had a way better time in terms of making our homemade crimson biome. 
If we're going to make a homemade crimson biome, I think we need to make it on the surface somewhere. Okay, so maybe that'll have to be a project for a future episode, but we're still getting at least some resources from down here. Not quite souls of night, but we're still getting some resources. Icor, very nice. Occasionally vertebrae, very nice, you know? All right, so I'll tell you what, to finish off the episode, let's go ahead once and for all and see what we can get on this here magic dagger. Mythical, mystic would be very, very, very nice. Masterful again. We've literally we got masterful on all three weapons here. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, this is great. I still can't believe the crit chance of the Sky Fracture, though. I had absolutely no idea it had this much of a buff to its default crit chance. It's insane, isn't it? It really, really is. So then, I think on that note, my friends, it is time to wrap up the episode. Like I say, very much a farmy, getting more weaponsy type episode, which I hope you guys have enjoyed. Of course, do be sure to drop a like if you have enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell as well if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day, my friends, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye!